Hello viewer, welcome back to Artistry. I am your presenter, Thaira Swanyoike. We continue with joints. We had started with the, with the bat joint. Today, I want us to consider another joint that we call the brido joint. Brido joint uh, will look like this. So it will have one part well cut so that the other part will fit into it. Some people also call it the open tenon. Because you remember tenon is this part. So the part uh, will get into uh, this other part here, but this corner here it's open. So if we are getting it to somewhere like here, the tenon, then the joint will change its name. We we'll call it the mortise and tenon. But for now, the tenon is getting into the open space here. So we can call it either the open tenon or the brido joint. So it is commonly known as the brido joint. And the brido joint uh, is simple to make just as you can see. So I want to illustrate a little bit of the process of making the brido joint. So I have two pieces here. And the most important part is the marking out. So that we, can, we, do, we don't miss out on uh, cutting out, or rather the marking out. Uh, and then we can cut effectively. So we divide this, the, the width, the width of this piece, we divide it into three equal portions. So for mine here, right now, I'll do it in millimeters. It is 54, 54 millimeters. So that one, we we'll divide it into three equal portions, and then we'll mark for it. So we have a technique that we use. Instead of uh, you measuring to the millimeter, trying to balance and see how much three uh, divide by three will be, sometimes the, the number is not a whole number. So it may give you some problem measuring and marking precisely to the millimeter. So what we do, we extend this tip. We can use uh, any units here, either the inches or the millimeters. So from here, from three here, to four, to five, to six, I have one, two, three uh, uh, portions. And I want to, to divide it into three. So what I do, I set it well at six here. I set it well at three here. And then holding it there, I mark at this point where four is. I mark at this point where five is. I have two dots, although they are, they are on a slanting plane. So that, why, that way I have divided my piece into three equal portions. Then I'm going to use the marking gauge to transfer those lines uh, in a parallel position. So I'll go, I'm going to position my, my marking gauge right at one dot. And then I'll tighten the screw, the screw up here. Then to test if exactly this one is what I measured here, I'll put it here. And exactly comes to the point. So this point here should be exactly the same point here. So now I have my piece divided into three. Uh, from top here, since I wanted to enter here, I can either trace it. Tracing means I put it flush up there and then I make a mark here. Uh, that mark, I confirm it with a square. I confirm it with a tri-square. I put the tri-square there and I hold the tri-square between here and here. I don't hold here so that I don't miss out on squareness. I hold it here. I can hold it right at the center and confirm that line. Confirming means I draw it again now with a tri-square. And then I extend it on the sides here and on the other side here. So the marking out process is very important. Very important in the aspect that if you miss out on marking out, then you will miss out the whole concept. All your precision will go off. So now I have my three lines. I want to make my brido joint. 
to enter there I have my divisions that denote uh, dividing it into three my marking gauge is well set so I'll use those marks now to mark only from here up we have a marking gauge line we have another marking gauge line on the other side so with those two lines I'll transfer the same up here and the same here I'll transfer down here and again down here so we have to mark as well on this other side so I'll confirm those gauge lines with this with a pencil so after marking on this piece then I'll as well mark on the other piece where now I'll trace mark confirm with the square on this side So I'll mark all round and then use the gauge, the marking gauge. To mark on this side and then I continue marking. So my piece is now well marked. I'll put the pencil lines again well visible. Oh, sorry. So now the joint will get into each other. And then to avoid confusion, I'll mark the part that is coming out. I'll shade it. I'll shade this part that is coming out. I'll shade it. I'll shade it completely so that I will know that part is coming out. In joinery, we use the shaded part to indicate waste. So once I mark it well like that, then that piece, even if I give it to someone to go and cut, they know where to remove and where to, uh, to reserve. So for this one now, it will be opposite. Now this part at the center here, this part will come out. So that is the process of marking out. And it is very important to take time to mark out so that now, once you cut, they will be exactly uh, they will fit exactly into each other. So you can see the, the marked out piece. The only remaining part now is cutting out. And you can be sure once you cut, then we are going to achieve such a joint that will get into each other. And it should fit a little bit tight so that you, you hit it a bit, hit it from both sides, a little bit and then they should form uh, 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 a bridle joint so the process of marking out is very important and that is why i've taken all the time to mark out so that now once we come to the cutting it will not be a big deal you just cut and remove the shaded part and then you fit it into each other so that is the process of making the bridle joint so ensure that your chisel is sharp, your, your 
your, your saw, the tenon saw is also sharp. Your marking out tools are ready and they are well uh, positioned. So once you start the process of marking out, you take a short time, mark out, and then you'll be able to hold it with the, with the bench vise firmly there. And once it is well held up there, then use the tenon saw to cut. Once you cut along the grains, you start with along the grains so that you don't split. If you start with, the, with cutting across, then once you come to rip, it will, it will break at some point. So you start with, the, with ripping or cutting along the grains, and then you set it on the bench hook, cut across the grains, and then you fit it together. So that is a simple process of making a bridle joint. We may either have a bridle joint at the corner, we call it the corner bridle, or we can even have it in the center, uh, in the center somewhere, then we will call it a T bridle to form letter T. So for now, that is the process of, ma of marking out and then cutting will be easy. So for now, we will take a short break and then once we will be back, we will illustrate another woodworking joint. Stay tuned.